Hey, welcome back to How to Fix It Workshop. My name is Josh, and in this video, I'm back in the workshop and we're putting together a very minimalist, simplistic floating cabinet, but it's gonna have some really cool features to it, like some doors that are going to be able to lift upward and kind of stay in place. So over here, I have some one by 10 pine. We're gonna be starting out with building a box. These 1x10s, this is just 1x10 pine that I'm using here, it just doesn't actually measure 1 inches by 10 inches. The 10 inches is actually 9 and a quarter, and the 1 inch is about 3 quarters of an inch. But I want to make a box that is going to have one of these 9 and a quarter inch pieces go across the top of it to act as the door. So I want it to be 9 and a quarter inches so that the front, as it's closed, it's going to cover that entire box making a line here. So I want four of these pieces that'll end up being this length that are gonna be on the two sides and then the two pieces in the middle that'll support the overall cabinet. Next up here, I got the two 70 inch pieces, the, what's gonna be the top and the bottom. I got them clamped together with these small clamps here. And what I wanna try to find out is where is the points where I'm going to put these middle dividers. So when I take 70, and divide it by three, it equals 23 and a third, and the approximate length of 23 and a third inches translated into an inch is three eighths of an inch. So and that's gonna be my reference for the, the midpoints of where I'm going to attach these dividers in the middle. And I made a little mark on my tape measure here too, just to have as a reference, just in case I lose sight of where that line should be. And then I can use it so that it matches up with the marks that I made on the other side. We have a little bit of bowing here in the wood or cupping. I'm just going to try to match up those edges, the ends right here. And then I'm going to stick a clamp right here in the middle that's going to pull that bowing together. Now we'll just make our way on down the line. Slightly unconventional way of how I glued these these two pieces together, but I used I was able to use my clamps and these scrap pieces of wood to kind of draw in the crown that we had in the in these boards. So it all it looks pretty flush now. Looks a lot better than it was. Now that the glue's all dry, the next couple steps are just going to be sanding everything smooth and then applying a coat of stain and then a water-based poly for protection. Before I jump into staining though, I have this lip here where this board was a little bit bowed and I wanted to get the edges as smooth as possible or close together as possible. So I'm just going to take a block plane here and break down that edge there because it's going to be a lot faster than trying to sand all of this down.
found these hinges on Amazon and they're made specifically for doors that fold upwards, so like in an RV. But I wasn't exactly sure how they operated and there wasn't any instructions that came with them, but I'll leave a link down below. So I mocked up a couple of pieces of scrap wood, one that'll represent the door and one that's gonna represent the back of the entertainment center. And I wanted to see how they, how they folded and I thought it would make sense for once when they're folded together, there's, they have that kind of shape to them. And I figured if the, the longer piece here is kind of the more concealed piece, so it's more up inside the cabinet, that made more sense to me. So I put that together with that longer piece being the, on the inside. So this would be the top and this would be the door. And that's how they open. It's a little aggressive. I'm hopeful that uh, it won't be quite that challenging to get them open, but it looks like, you know, there's a lot of ability here, stability to keep them, keep those doors open. That's, that was my main concern. I didn't want them to open and then just immediately fall back down. So. The nice thing with a project like this, it has three doors and as you work your way down, you find tips and tricks along the way that help you basically become you know, a master at how to install these hinges by the time you get to the third door. On the first one, I thought it was gonna be easiest to install them with the doors closed, which was in this orientation here, and that was quite a pain. So then I thought, well, maybe by laying the doors open like they are here, I can install them uh, in this orientation so that uh, they're easier to get to, and all I would have to do is figure out how to line them up so that there's enough clearance because in this in this situation the two pieces of wood are rubbing against each other and i didn't want that to happen on this cabinet or to the doors because they could rub off the finish so i'm using an old woodworker's trick and i grabbed some uno cards and i found that ocho cards i believe i'm pronouncing that right eight different cards were the proper spacing from the first door, so I wanted to keep the same spacing all the way down. So I just line up my door here, I put the eight cards in the gap, and then I can take my hinges and put them side by side here. 